This is Twit. Well, folks, it's now time for the bites. But first, let me ask you a question. Let me throw a question out there. Do you trust your firewall? Well, a recent survey uncovers that organizations have some severe reservations about the effectiveness of their firewalls. Now, we're going to call those legacy firewalls for a second. Now, a rel- relatively high percentage of cybersecurity leaders apparently perceive most legacy firewall technologies as the long linchpin of enterprise security. Now, they believe that they're an ineffective way of protecting their applications against attacks. Now, the, a recent survey of 603 U.S. security professionals on their firewall use, the survey actually included both stateful firewalls that inspect incoming and outgoing traffic. It also included firewalls that integrated threat intelligence, intrusion protection, application access control, and other features. Now, the results, here we go, threat drum roll here. The results reveal that organizations are really unhappy, highly unhappy with their current firewall technologies. More more than half, 53% of the respondents actually say that they're either moving away from or reducing their dependency on firewalls and looking for other options. Question is, what are those other options? Now, six out of 10 of the survey security leaders believe legacy firewalls don't have the capabilities to protect critical applications and systems from attack. Now, an identical 60% describes legacy firewalls as being a little, really little help in enabling zero trust environments. So we've talked about zero trust in the past. It also says 76% say it took them too much time to secure new applications or change configurations with their legacy firewalls. And in fact, 57% say that sometimes it takes them as much as three weeks to a month to change firewall rules to accommodate and update their new applic- for their new applications. Now, 62% per- described the access control policies available for their firewalls as not being granular enough. Now, what it seems like here is that organizations are hoping that these devices are the silver bullet of their security and finding out that they're not. Now, I want to bring my co-host in, Chibert. You've worked a lot, a lot, a lot with legacy firewalls in the past. Is this just old news? It is and it isn't. Okay, so let's let's qualify that a little bit. I have done testing of a lot of legacy firewalls um, and so forth. But the reality is, is I have been using uh, UTM, Unified Threat Management style firewalls now for the vast majority of my career. And to this date, none of my facilities have been hacked. And that's because I have, even before perimeter security was dead and before it was fashionable, I always set my systems up in a zone zone defense type of thing. And my UTMs will always try and go and look at all the traffic as it goes in between each zone. This is what I see lacking. I go into a lot of organizations and the firewall only has a LAN and a WAN. It's like, uh, where's the rest of your zones? Oh, that's all we need. It's like, no, that's not all you need. Um, I can't. Even really big corporations have this problem. And I see a lot of these corporations, the firewall people make you jump through an amazing amount of hoops, lots of forums, lots of sign-offs and so forth to get a firewall rule changed. And then I start looking at what's involved. And it's like, you guys are, I, I, I admit, the command line is great. You can do a lot of stuff with the command line and all that things. But that means you have to have a high-end person driving that firewall. Um, I've been, it's not, it's no secret. I've been really high on sonic wall and that's because I have the option of being at the command line for those people that have the training and want to go fast and want to do scripting and things like that and use a lot of, um, uh, special expressions in your programming, all fine and good. But what about the kids that are just starting? What about the person that's filling in while, the experts on maternity leave or paternity leave. That's when a GUI comes in. And this is my big, big, big complaint about a lot of these so-called giant enterprise grade firewalls. It's like you're relying so heavily on someone that has spent their entire career doing firewalls that changes become difficult. So in answer to all this, I don't think firewalls are the problem. I think it's how you drive the firewalls that are the problem. Good point. I I do want to come back to that because I have a question about maybe automation might help here. But before I get to that, Curtis, I want to throw this to you. Now, we've discussed perimeter security and how it's old news. Like we've, we've talked a lot about zero trust, 
along with micro segmentation and how it might be the wave of the future. Does that make legacy firewalls obsolete here then? You know, I want to compare this to something that happened when when I was very young. Um, that was the introduction introduction of airbags in cars. You know, I remember when airbags started to be put into cars, when they were arguing in favor of them, the argument was that seat belts would no longer be required. You know, you would just get into your car. If something happened, airbags would pop out. You would be just wrapped in the state puffed marshmallow of safety and life would be perfect. Well, as it turns out, that's not the case. Uh, airbags are really good, but you still need the seat belts and the shoulder belts to keep you in place for them to protect you. I think the legacy firewall is like that. Microsegmentation is going to make a huge difference. It's going to be much safer. It's based on a much better premise for security in that it's risk-based rather than protection-based. With that said, you still want the firewall in place. Why? Because it screens out so much of the noise. Because it will catch some of the attacks coming in. And it makes it so much easier for all of the zero trust infrastructure to be more effective. So the time is past when you can depend upon the legacy firewall for all your protection. But I don't think we're going to be able to do without it for a long time into the future. Yeah, I agree. I think that's the interesting thing about this is that a lot of these organizations are saying, you know what, we thought this was a silver bullet. Now that we've implemented this, it's not. So let's go find something else. Is that really the answer here is the question? So Chibert, I want to throw this back to you. Talked a little bit about tooling and maybe automating some things. Is is that Would that help here? Would that make this easier? A lot of them are complaining about the fact that it takes too long to, to upgrade the rules and the policies of these things. Or like you said, you know, uh, a, a third party might come in and that might take over for somebody who's like on vacation or something and, and throw a bad policy. In fact, we've seen big cloud services like Amazon uh, push policy issues and rule issues out to the cloud and actually take their entire service down. So is this where automation is going to come and save the day? And, and then, like Curtis said, still allow organizations to use those firewalls along with some of the newer technologies? Oh, you bet. AI is going to be a saving grace. Now, in a traditional firewall, an AI is not going to help a whole lot because traditional firewalls are not very agile at changing. Now, when you start talking about a firewall that would be more considered a unified threat appliance or something like that, where the IDS IPS is built in, that's where AI is really going to make a difference. And if a um, firewall vendor isn't talking AI yet, they're behind the curve. Um, I can really see, you know, especially on things like P, uh, firewall on uh, UTM appliances are saying we can deal with zero day. Zero day characterization is getting harder and harder. This is no longer the day of like Slammer where you can just close a TCP or UDP port. That's you can't do that anymore. You're now having to go and look at the packet and see what's in the packet, what how the packets are arranged, and you need something that can keep track of a large number of packets to deal with the low and slow attacks. So AI is going to be the next big thing. And if you AI is going to be what is necessary to deal with just a huge number of hackers and attacks and malicious this and that that are imploding themselves against the enterprise. And trust me, you if you put a firewall driver in the seat where they are indispensable you've lost already you need people that can do many many things and that ai and things like that are going to make it easier for you to have the coverage because when the firewall rules and changing things start getting in the way of you making money game over that's right. That's right. I mean, single point of failure is always a bad thing. So I agree with you, Super. Curtis, I want to throw the last question to you here. Now, we hear a lot of organizations 
moving to a hybrid cloud or moving or digitally transforming to the cloud. Um, and they're starting to use, you know, SD WANs, software defined uh, WANs. And they're also starting to move to the, the concept of next generation firewalls. Things like Cisco offers these things, which do implement uh, more threat protection, threat intelligence, AI, that kind of thing. Is that something that's going to change the landscape here? Or is that is these things just traditional firewalls just at a much higher scale? No, they're really not just traditional firewalls at scale. Uh, Next-gen firewalls really are doing some things different. Among other things, they are getting involved with a lot of deep packet inspection. They're looking within the packet as well as simply looking at the wrapper for the packet. In addition, next-gen firewalls are really what you have to have if you're going to do a um, a hybrid architecture where you have both on-premises and cloud uh, services as part of your, your architecture. So I think that we're going to see more and more organizations going to next-gen firewalls because they must. Uh, if you want to have any uh, hope of wrapping a security blanket around your entire infrastructure, the traditional firewall just isn't going to do it. Uh, it's great for on-premises stuff. It's great if you're trying to protect say a branch office, something like that. But if you're doing the sort of big, sprawling, partially cloud-based architecture that most enterprises are these days, next gen is the way to go.